practice dairy goats and today we are going to let Champ and his three ladies out to browse. So it's been a couple years since Champ has had the opportunity to browse so hopefully this goes well and he doesn't try to break out. Come on. Let's see what Champ does. Come out to browse. So he looks like he's rather enjoying the browsing of it, but as soon as a girl moves, he's kind of wanting to make sure he stays close to him. Uh, so I don't know if you guys can see, beyond this compost pile here, all the gold the goaties have made, there are the other pens. So right on the other side of that compost pile is Vader and Legend and Everest and Lucky's pens. So that he can actually walk up there so I imagine at some point he's gonna notice that and he's going to be talking to the boys and trying to maybe talk to the other ladies so we'll see how that goes as well but so far it's been going really good which is what I was hoping for it's not a lot of action but that's what I was hoping for he did look at that fence now the last time we let him out he did actually get bit a couple times and jumped out of the fence so, but it looked like he remembered what that fence is and that it bites. So hopefully <laughs> this goes well. And there it is. Champ has figured it out. He can see the other goats and does. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh, we'll see how Champ acts. These does here are being brats too. <laughs> they want to fight as well. Yeah, he wants to get back a little bit. Get back. <laughs> what do you think, Lucky? He doesn't have quite the view he would like. So I'm hoping this interaction along the fences will be short-lived. I know they're going to have to get it out of their systems by all means, but I'm hoping he gets to enjoy browsing because the bucks don't typically get to. The fact that they're in here with does is really the only safety net we have that they would stay in it potentially. So it's really going to be the only opportunity they have to browse is when they're with their does. So they better behave and enjoy it while they can. That's what I'm hoping for. So now Champ is the first pen that we let out, obviously, but each day we're gonna let a different group out. So we'll just go down the line until we hit Merle. So there'll be six different um, groups of goaties that get let out to browse this. And then we'll just continue to rotate them while they're, while they're penned up. And the does have been so eager to get out. They watch us run um, the other does that we're not breeding currently and they just get so upset because they, they love to browse and they want to get out and, and nibble. You can see Abilene's missed it. She, and Cammie's such a good girl. Every time she's like, whatever, no drama, just let me eat. I'll be over here by myself. And little bit, I think she's uh, taking a liking to Everest a little. She's not allowed to like Lucky because that is her full brother. All right, guys, so now it is time for the long awaited build of the A frame that I have designed. So, I actually designed this or came up with the A frame a few years back. Um, I really love it. I build them really well, and this is the last A frame that I actually have to build. So, let's get to it. Well, most of that is not accurate, but what is accurate is you are going to need 20 2 by 4 by 8s. 14 2 by 3 by 8s and six sheets of 15 30 seconds plywood or whatever is most affordable at your place. You're also gonna, for framing, I'm screwing it together with two and a half inch uh, star bit screws and just inch and a quarter drywall screws for the, uh, for the sheeting. 
So I went ahead and laid out some boards. I got five, five, and five. And the first thing you want to do, crown all your boards. Each board has a, a bend or a undesirable trait one way. And you want to put the, uh, the crown up. So that's what I'm doing to every board first. Basically, each board is not perfectly straight. It's, either, it's got a, cr a slight crown in it. And even if it doesn't, just pick a side. You, whichever side has the slight bend up, you want to put a mark, like I did, an X, on every one of those, and you want all of those facing up. So if you have all of your crowns up, it's going to make it look smoother at the end. If you have, if you have one board that the crown is down, when you're looking at it, that's, it's going to appear like a dip. So just make life simple and just put all the crowns up. So now you want to make sure you got all five boards nice and even. Or, or you can mark them out individually, whatever's easier for you. So I'm going to pull 48 inches on these five. So I'm going to mark that board at 48 inches. Use my uh, speed square here. Mark four of them. Flip it over, get that fifth one. I'm going to go ahead and write 48 on the... Uh, on the 49 inch side of this mark. For these five in the middle, I'm gonna pull 47 and a half inches. So there I got 47 and a half. My square on there. And I'm gonna write 47 and a half. Okay, so these five are the horizontal, and we're going to mark 14 and a half inches on each side. And I will explain that later. You'll, you'll see why. 14 and a half there. You don't need to write the measurement on that. You'll be able to see it the whole time, as long as it's needed to see anyway. That's the first part. All right, so now we're, we're back down here at our first five. We're gonna flip them on their side and make sure all the crowns went the same way. So all my crowns are facing that direction now. You're gonna take your speed square again. And you're just gonna mark a 45 on the end of each one of them. So I'm going to do the same thing with these 47 and a half inches. I'm just going to roll them forward, make sure all the crowns are facing the same way. We're going to put that same 45 on there. Now we're going to saw each one of these off. All right, now that we got those ends cut, you're gonna stand each one of these back up just how you had them. All the crowns up. So now we're gonna pre-drill each one of these boards here so we can attach the two uh, verticals, if you will. They're not really verticals, but the two top portions of the A. So we're gonna pre-drill so we can put a screw in it like that. So I'm using an eighth inch drill bit and I'm just gonna put it in there at an angle 
And you want to do this on every board, on the, just one time, and on the same side of the board. See how I'm not in the middle, and I'm not right, left, right, left. Every one of them I did kinda, kinda to the right. And the same thing to these five. Kinda to the right side of center is where I'm putting it in. And that's, that's so when we attach these, they don't, uh, the screws don't hit each other. All right, so we're back to the five horizontal. And each side where we mark the 14 and a half, we're gonna mark where we're gonna pre-drill. When we make this thing, those 47 inch marks and 40, 47 and a half inch marks and 48 inch marks are gonna line up on this mark. So the, the, the A is actually gonna be going like this through this, this two by four. So we're just gonna go ahead and pre-drill two spots there on each board. That way when we're putting it together, it's easier. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna set it this way, making sure my crown is that way. Same thing. Same thing, same thing. So on this side, the A is gonna be going through it this way. So I'm gonna put one there, one there. Lay it down, make my crowns are still going the right way. Oop, more like air and there, huh? Now we're just gonna pre-drill them. Pre-drilling, if you're on the end, like that, uh, those, those 45 cuts up there we did, it helps keep it from splitting. Other than that, it's just making this easier when I'm putting it together by myself, and you'll see. So we're just gonna do the same thing over here. Now you want to get out one of those two by threes. I have an extra one, so that's what I'm using for this little part of the project that I'm about to show you. Um, what we're gonna do is where the, the two A's connect, I put a small little board across the top to brace them together. And they're gonna be about 11 inches each, so 11, 22, 33, 44, uh, 55. five of them because there's five A's. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and pre-drill these two. Just put one through each one, or each side. That already had one. Now we're ready to start putting our five uh, A's together, if you will. So I've got my 47 and a half inch one here. It helps if you have a really awesome trailer like this to build everything on. If not, you might need help. But basically I'm gonna put those together where it looks like a 40, you know, the 45's the line. We're gonna put a screw in that hole we pre-drilled. It's already helping us. I'm gonna line the two ends up. And hopefully drive that screw hole. Now we go to the other side. When we pre-drilled those holes, I was saying keep them all to the to the same side. And now when we position the boards, you can see why the screws went in and they did not hit each other. Now we're ready for one of the, the horizontals, horizontals of the A. See how I pre-drilled that so we can already hold my screw, but I want you to see this mark here. That line lining up with that line. Now it doesn't have to be exactly perfect but perfect is better. There. We're gonna put one in it. 
Again, the awesome trailer is holding the other end for me. Um, now, to line this end up, you can see how that's a little off. It doesn't want to be there naturally just yet. So you see my foot down here. I'm just going to hold it right there. I'm going to grab this thing, and I'm going to make it go where I want it to go. Wing go. Both lines match up. Add your second screw. Add your second screw down here. And then, you want to grab one of your little 11 inch pieces. You can go ahead and start a screw, make life simple. And all this is doing is going right here. Oh, watch your. That's all that's doing is going right there. Put your other screw. Now, you know, there's gonna be plywood out here. So that has to be to the inside. You know, that cannot be above here. So the plywood doesn't hit it. Okay, now we're just gonna repeat that process four more times. So the last one is a little bit different. It's essentially backwards. The way to build it to where it comes out okay, you're gonna take your 48 inch one which all of these are 48s. You're gonna put it on the other side. I know, crazy. You're gonna put it on the other side. You're gonna take the 47 and a half and put it on this side. Now, the reason for that is, is the plywood that goes on the inside of this for them to you know, walk on and bed down on is going to end. If you don't do it this way, there won't be anything for that plywood to screw to. So you gotta do it this way and then we'll flip it back. And also, if you didn't spin this around, this little piece here would be sticking out. You know, and that wouldn't be good. People would be talk, talking crap about you like you didn't know how to build anything. So now that it's built, just spin it around to show you what it means. So when this is all spaced out, the plywood will end right here on this side, just like the other side. Both sides will look the same. And then when you look at your marks, 47 and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, 47 and a half, 47 and a half. Over here is all the 48s. And that's why you put the marks on there because if this gets confused, when you, if you have to move things around, it's just easier to read the mark than to pull your tape measure out a hundred times. Now there's going to be a ramp that comes up into the upper level of the A-frame and we're gonna build those now. These two here are straighter, so I'm gonna save them for the, the fascia boards, if you will. And these three are about the nastiest ones that I have. So I'm going to use them where no one will see them. So again, I'm gonna crown everything. So that's a snake. And because we're gonna cut these, I'm gonna mark my crowns on the other end as well, just so I can see them. Now, we're gonna put our crowns all forward. And we are going to do the same thing that we did for them. We're gonna put a 45 on each end though. with the longest point being the crown. You're gonna 45, you know, if the crown's up, you're gonna 45 from it on both ends. Then before we cut them, we're also going to just pull from one side. Yeah, these are, these are a true 96. Some boards aren't, but this one is. So we're gonna put a four foot mark in the center because we're gonna cut these in half. And three of them are gonna be the ramp for one side of the A-frame, and the other three are gonna be the ramp for the other side of the A-frame. Now that we got all that marked out, we're just gonna go ahead and cut them.
since they're supposed to be the same size, I'm just going right up the line, not to one side or the other. Just take the line. Okay, now I need to cut one of these four by eight sheets of plywood in half. So we have two four foot squares that we can have my kids get out here and screw onto these boards. And then the ramps that go into the A-frame will be ready. Just gonna pull this booger down where I can get to it, I guess. Pull four feet. Mark it there. And then you want to mark E. Twain over here, too. Boom. It's important to say boom whenever you do something like that. Now we're going to just snap a line on it. Put that right there. Pull it out. Leave it there for me. Walk over here. Wham! Wham works too. <laughs> Stupid. We want to get the kids screwing these together so I can keep going. So we're going to go ahead and mark it out for them. So you want to pick your best side. This is the side you're going to be looking at forever. So get your best side up. The first board, a two by four is an inch and a half thick. So it's going to run all the way down this way. The other one's going to run up this end. And then in the center, you know, the center is two and you want to go three quarters on each side of it or just one side. But since the kids are doing it, that's what we're doing. Now, we need to make these same marks on the other end of this board. So that's how Darren and Emily, or you at home, will be able to find where the 2x4 goes. So, inch and a half, you don't even need to do that, really. That's where it goes, but 3 quarter, 3 quarter. So that's an inch and a half in between. And that's where that one's going to go. I'm going to kind of help them out a little bit and just bring that over to the edge where they can see it a little better. Do the same thing for them right there. And my young apprentice, Darren here, is going to screw this together for me. His sister is going to pre-drill for him. Because it helps keeping... Pre-drilling, like I said, helps keep stuff from splitting and it also gives Emily something to do. So it's a win-win. If, uh, if you got a kid in the house playing video games, you need some holes pre-drilled. So if you can see what's happening, here's our three two by fours. The 45s are all on the end, all the crowns are up. There's gonna be one here, one there, one there. And we're gonna put a screw at each end, one in the middle, and then in between. So five in each spot. One there, one there, that looks about right. So does that, so does that. And then on this side, so Emily's gonna pre-drill every one of those X's. And then Darren is gonna put five screws, in, five screws in each spot using those inch and a quarter inch drywall screws. Ready to cut the next sheets of plywood for this so I thought I'd just explain where they go it's six sheets of plywood one's gonna go here the 47 and a half inch side is gonna force the 48 inch sheet of plywood to stick up by about a half inch so the other half inch sheet of plywood 
can set underneath it and keep drips from getting in there. So that's one sheet, two sheets. In the center is going to be three sheets. Each end of the ramp is the fourth sheet. Now, sheets five and six are going to go here and here. That's sheet five. And over here, same thing, sheet six. Now, this is 14 and a half inches, if you remember we made that mark, because when we tie all these together with those other two pieces that I called a fascia, it's going to be 16 inches. So we're going to cut 16 inches of plywood off these two sheets for this runner board, if you will, and then the remaining 32 inches is going to be down here. Now that works really good for our environment because it allows airflow and heat is our enemy not cold. It also gives them something to peek out all the way around. They really like it, but that's the thing. So 32 inches, 16. So we're going to cut those two sheets of plywood. It's going to, like I said, we're going to make the mark at 16 inches. We're going to go down there and do the same. But since I don't want to walk back up here, I'm going to go ahead and drag this chalk line with me. All right. Hopefully that didn't move too much. Make my other mark at uh, 16. Pull the line tight, snap it. My awesome multi-use screw also is going to hold that for me while I cut it. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the next sheet. All right, babe, what is next? Well, we are we're ready to go into the pen and start assembling it, so it's a it's a good time to stop for lunch. I think. What do you guys think? I definitely agree. I agree. <laughs> you guys gonna make me lunch too? I have been building pretty pretty hard. You're about to build a sandwich or something. Oh, <laughs> dang it. All right, so I'm totally not gonna build that bratty husband of mine a sandwich, but I am gonna build some quesadillas. Um, we are hungry, so. With the quesadillas I'm going to make today, it's just going to be chicken quesadillas, but I'm going to be using this lovely Gouda that I busted open a couple weeks ago. Now, this is a Gouda that it's the first time I've ever tried to make Gouda, and it tastes lovely. It was one of the quicker hard cheeses that you can make. It was super easy. It is five months old, like to the day, actually. So, and it is just a lovely melter. So if you guys have watched my channel for a while and with my cheese uh, making experiences and learning and all that good jazz, it is definitely something that excites me when my cheese melts because I like a melter cheese. We are just going to make these up real quick and then I'm going to pop them in the oven. I'm just going the easy route. I'm not going to do them on the pan because there's so many of us and I'll be standing over there and we've got more work to do. And then I will take them out and when they're done I'll show you guys. How lovely this delicious cheese melts. Okay guys, first I would like to start with, you guys have all been so, so amazing with your feedback, with all of your five star reviews, with all of your comments, you guys message us, you, you just let us know how wonderful the soap has been, been to your skin. Um, just, just, we've just been overwhelmed with how well this soap is doing. So thank all of you for, you know, purchasing the soap and giving it a try. Um, so just, just to go over the listings that we have, we do have the rose clay that is a bestseller. We have our honey oat and this here is our maple bar. Huge hit, you guys. This one I thought, well, we'll just make it seasonal, but I don't know. So, and then we have our charcoal bars that are doing super awesome. Our pink Himalayan, you guys get out. You love this one. Um, we, of course, added more ginger. If you haven't tried the ginger soap, you guys have to. 
And then um, we did just have plain lavender. Now we listed more lavender and Brazilian clay. And let's see here. So this is our terracotta. We still have some terracottas. And then of course our white gold. That I don't know that we always keep getting scared because I don't know that we can keep up with this one in the way that it's selling because everybody's really loving it, but that's okay. So we're, we'll do our best. And then our new ones, you guys, I'm always excited for the new ones because it's fun to make to make new ones. Um, so this one here is our chocolate pie. So Alexa and I uh, teamed up and made this bad boy. It is so soft on your skin. Your skin, it is a wonderful, wonderful soap and very mild as well because it doesn't have anything but the cocoa in it in addition to just the regular bar. So this is a really good one and it's fun. This one is really, really cool. Now this is a scented one. Uh, so this is my pine soap. Um, it's scented with pine, which just smells amazing. Um, and then it has Epsom salt and then a tree. So it's a little pine tree. This one took so much time to make. You can't make a bunch of these at the same time, but, but it was fun and it was really exciting to cut it open. So this is a really, really cool bar that I've just really enjoyed. Love this one. And it smells, it smells like Christmas and it looks like Christmas. So it's wonderful. And this here was Alexa's beautiful creation. This is candy cane. So this is our a peppermint bar. Um, and then it just has purple kale and clay in it that turns out to be a red. So this is, um, again, Alexa's creation, beautiful bar, beautiful smelling. This candy cane is uh, going quick. I actually listed these yesterday. So you guys better hurry up and get some candy cane if you're wanting it. So in addition to having the three new soaps, we have listed, like I said, more of the favorites that you guys keep telling us you want more of and to continue making and listing. Um, so you got a lot of choices up there. Perfect timing for the holidays, perfect timing for gifts for yourself. Don't forget about gifts for yourself as well, you guys. Stocking stuffers, you got the coal bar, if there's somebody that's been naughty, right? Hmm? Just saying. So, or the candy cane for the sweet person. Go to the Etsy shop, go get some soap, Get some holiday shopping done and online where you don't have to worry about the crowds. But uh, I smell my quesadillas, so I'm going to head over there. Let's go see this quesadilla cut. I want you guys to see how creamy and lovely and melty this cheese is. These quesadillas smell so, so good, you guys. So I'm just going to take a little peek. It's piping hot. But hopefully it gives that beautiful melting that I'm wanting you to see. Are you kidding me? It didn't do it. <laughs> of course it didn't it's such a perfect melter and it's just my knife is cutting it too good but look at that so there you guys are just gonna have to you know what I envisioned like breaking it open like in the commercials and the cheese it didn't happen but I did still show you it's a really good melter so what we're gonna do is we are going to eat our lunch and then we got to get our butts back out there because I got to finish building the A-frame all right, we are ready to start carrying these in. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I see what he did. Oh. Awesome. Oh. Careful, Emily. Okay. Oh, I need to get a Kind of a tight corner there, buddy. Alright, so we're going to start putting these these up and they need to be two feet apart and it's, it's kind of, you know, wobbly and difficult until you get, you know, some things secured. So we're going to go ahead and pre-drill some holes in this thing just at two feet so we can use it to help hold stuff for us until we uh, get a little further along. So, so you go ahead and put one right here in the end first and then we'll go over two feet. And 
It'll be two feet on center. So yeah, we'll put one there. Hope that that's right. that down here but you got to spin so you're gonna end up over here and you're gonna end up right there okay all right go for it all right that'll work I guess so again this is just to hold it kind of temporarily and we always put it in the wrong spot don't we Darren for now we're gonna put it right there if you see that, that's the only way, chance you have of doing it yourself is a couple of braces like that. So, yeah, bring it on down. That's that away, Darren. Or, yeah, you got to spin first, right? Yeah. All the way in to this hole here. Now right now we're just, just, just everything's gonna move. You just gotta get it up so you can fine tune it later. So, yeah, watch your, watch yourselves. Back to me. Next. And wing go. That one does not spin. Okay. If you bring it on in. I didn't pre drill it, but it'll be all right. There we go. Now. You guys grab it with both hands and don't let it fall, okay? Yep. Okay, now that it's all standing here, you can see, you know, this is the one that we built backwards in the 48, 48, 48, they're all 48s and the other side's all 47 and a half. And you see how that little board is on the inside. And when we get the plywood in here in just a, just a few minutes, it's gonna stick flush out, you know, just the same as the other side and it's all gonna be cosmetically nice and neat. So you can see down this line, that's pretty good for just setting it here. And, and every sheet of plywood we put on, we're gonna be correcting it as we go until it's good and nice and square. So we're ready to get going. First, we're gonna grab that 32 inch by eight foot sheet of plywood and we're gonna put it right here. Yep. Oh, let's go this way up. All right, let me put mine in first. All right. So we've got, our prettiest side facing out and our factory edge up because the guy that cut this probably was all over the place. So first, I'm gonna get this bottom corner nice and flush and I'm gonna put a screw in it. I'm just gonna pull that over and that was really easy. And put a screw in it. All right, now we're just gonna, we're gonna screw this in on because the whole thing's eight feet. So these two are gotta be eight feet. This board here is not in the right spot. You just pull it over. You're the builder. So it's all flush right here and that's all we're lining it up off of at this point. Nice, set the screw, and then right here, just to straighten that out just like the other end, it's just still, everything's real loose and moving easy. So that's that, flush on that end, flush on the bottom, both ends. Now, I'm gonna pull two feet, you know, I'm gonna mark out where these go, the remaining three. I'm gonna pull from this side because I have a, that side seems to be goofy because how we flipped it around. So we're gonna pull from this side first, 
it's two feet on center, but you go three quarter from one side. And since you know, since we're just doing it as a family, I'm going to mark both sides. So again, we're going over here. You can see how how the whack at looks right now, but it's going to move right on back when we want it to. You have to make these same marks at the bottom so we can find them. So again, is the six feet, four feet, two feet on center. You're gonna mark three quarters from each side. All right, so we're gonna line up the bottoms first. All right, Darren, this way. Oh, Kick it towards the house. Okay, now it's gotta go towards up. Oh, hold on, bud, hold on. So to get this to go up, you gotta try multiple things, but one of the things is he's gonna take right here and just lift up. A little more, a little more. Oh, oh. Once you hit it, you hit it. And that's why pre-drilling helps. So now you're going to move it over into the marks. Right there. All right, ready? Yep. Um, yes, yes, more. Back a little. Oh, oh, oh. Right there, up. 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 Yeah. Oh, down a little. Down, 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 down. Got it. All right, yep, keep going, keep going, keep going. A little more, oh, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, where it is. Which should also happen as you go. It should get better as you go. All right, there. Now, we're gonna go to the other side and just keep going. Once I get enough ahead, the kids, they'll fall back and, and use a level to put lines on here and you'll, you'll see. Other side. So on the other side, we pulled from this end because I said that end piece, the one that we flipped around is often screwy. So you want to make sure that you pull from this end too, same side. Pull your tape from the same side. A full four by eight sheet of plywood. Yep. Put it in. Yep, yep, yep. Wingo. Or bang or bam. Boom. Yep. Whatever you want to say. So we're getting ready to screw this piece down. And even though we have the bottoms already pretty square and sound, we want to make sure to continue that process throughout everything and all the way up. So right here on the plywood, I've put a mark at an inch and a half on either side because it should it should stick over an inch and a half. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is from here, we're gonna measure over to two feet on center. We're gonna do that three quarters on either side thing again. Just to make sure we can pull this part straight. We're gonna mark it out all the way across like that on both sides. Ugh. This gap here is four and a half inches on both sides, approximately, it's all right. And we're an inch and a half overhang. Now I got a mark and I'm just lining it up on the edge of this two by. When I got it, I'm gonna make a dent in the board and, and then there it is. All right. You probably gotta move your end over there to that mark. You good? Yep. So, yeah, you got to do that. Like, put one in and move things around. It's and then and then and then put another screw. In. And again, I'm just tacking so the kids have stuff to do. So while Darren's tacking that down, I'm gonna have him put 
the level right there on that screw head over there. And Emily's gonna put the level right in the center of this board here, right? And then Emily's gonna take this pin. She's gonna reach all the way across and make a line. It's all right, that's good enough. I'm a sharp person. Now we know where to, now we know where to get our screws. All right, so now we're ready to screw this one on. If you can see, we are right on the 47 and a half inch line. And, uh, and that's gonna make it stick up a half inch up top there. Please move, kid. You've been working. You see that line there? Just gonna be right on it. Wingo. Okay, so just like we've done everywhere else, we're gonna mark it out pulling from the same side, two feet on center, and, and he's gonna do that, and then he will push them into place as I put screws in them. Racking it. First, watch yourself. both screw heads make the line or, or really just kind of a you know, just one screw is going to go in the center and then there and there so you can just kind of knotted line it if you want it okay not on the ends they already have them on the ends For this last one, there's nothing really to correct. Everything's pretty much where it's gonna be. Um, if something's just a hair off, it's okay. It's a goat structure, don't freak out or anything. He doesn't, now he doesn't have to measure those off because he can see his screw heads on the other side. So Emily's marking those out up in the back and he's putting one there and one there because this is a 32 inch piece so it's going to have four screws on each stud and these are the four foot so they'll have five in each run we are down to our last two two by four by eights the one i was referring the ones i was referring to as a fascia and i'm going to go ahead and crown them so i crown everything one is for this side and one is for this side now there's no real need to measure any of these out but there is they are going to overhang by an inch and a half. So I'm just going to pre-drill one and hand this off to Emily, hopefully. Right on down that way. Don't just hold me. on, hold on. Let me get one in first. I'll hold it with my leg. And I'm just, it's an inch and a half, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You look good, bud? Yep. Flush there. All right, we don't need them in the center, Emily, just on the ends where they might split. There we go. So we're going to put two screws in the end of each one and then put the remaining 16-inch piece of plywoods on there. 
And we are almost done. Minus like. But not really, yeah. 150 screws. Something like that. So. I like pre-drilling the ends because they could split, but these are also really nice screws. This is the piece that we cut out of this one. It magically fits right there, just like I planned it. I'm gonna put a Phillip right there, Darren. Cool screw boy. Oh, oh. Did you push all the way up? Nope. All right, bring one down here. Go along now, honey. Right there. Oh, oh, look at the board. Okay. So Darren and Emily are gonna finish screwing this down. Like I said, they're gonna put five in this, in every stud in this one, five on the inside throughout. And along the front here, they're gonna go about every eight inches. And also at the backs, but while they're doing that, we're gonna move on to the other side. So now we're ready to put these ramps on. And the way that I attach them, is pretty simple. The first thing I'm gonna have Darren do is just back out these three inch and a quarter drywall screws that he put in. Go. Feel free to keep those with you. You can take them home, souvenir, whatever you need. They are full. All right, so Emily, you're gonna go over here. Darren, you go back to what you were doing. Thanks. You're welcome. You're fired. What? Now, yeah. so we're gonna put it right. Emily, you see the angle of the board here on your end? You want yes. that nice and flat and all the way up under there. All the way up. Come on, lift, lift. There you go. Now, I'm gonna put one of the two and a halfs into there, and it's just screwing into that two by four over there. So this one just needs pick up a little. Ooh. And then Una Moss right there. Now we'll go do the other one. So we are ready to start putting the stairs on here. We got five on each side. One goes here, four go up there, four on the other side, one on the other side and the bottom. And then three go right there. Now those ones, those were three eight footers that I cut into six four footers. Three on this side, three on the other. All of them have been crowned and all of the ends have been pre-drilled. We're gonna put two screws in each spot. So down here, we're gonna center it on the 16. Now it's a two and a half inch board, so we're gonna go an inch and a quarter, um, inch and a quarter. For the top stairs or whatever we're calling them, how I mark this out is I put one at six inches, and then I'm gonna move it up to the foot. So now that six inch mark now says a foot. And I'm gonna put one at two foot, three foot, four foot. Right here, we're gonna put them at one foot, two foot, three foot. The, the top of the board to that mark, and the board's gonna go there. Same thing up here. Yeah. We only center this one over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark everything out all the way around, because that's what I like to do. Three feet, yep. Same thing up here, again, six inches. Move it up to the foot. One foot, two foot, three foot. Uh, four foot, right there. And this one here, we were centering on the 16, so an inch and a quarter, um, inch and a quarter. We did, we, we put this one that way because it, they could stand on it and jump up. That's why. So now we're all marked out and we're ready to go. Just waiting on Darren there. Oh man, ready. So we got our crown up. 
go right to the marks. You good? Yep. All right, up here, Darren. Again, I'm just trying to tack them on. My, my apprentice here will come back around and finish everything off behind me. That's good. Up. Right here on the, the lowest one. You good? Yep. Now I'm what? Now I'm like three ahead of you already. Ready? Just so you can pull them. Crown up. You good? Yep. Still waiting on him. You have the better drill. I he, do. He does. Alright guys, so that is how I build an A-frame. It looks great. I'm going to continue building it. Uh, again, the kids are just going to continue to put those screws in and uh, can't wait to see the does on it when we run them back. Oh. Don't you do it, Ruger. And there they go. They did it again. What do you think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are fast. We got Lacey, Roxy, these two yickety yackers. Ray and Ruger, um, they're the ones that are going to be able to enjoy the A-frame for now because, as I've mentioned before, we have Skye on a diet. So she's kind of back there to where she can't get a bunch of this food, just browse. So she's on a diet and I put her daughter Shilly on a diet as well because she's just kind of bullying everybody and eating all the food. So that's where they're hanging out. But yeah, so hopefully they'll start playing here soon when they're done. What do you think about it, Emily? Uh, I feel like this took all day, but it was totally worth it because it's an awesome structure and it looks very pretty when it's in. It does. They, they're really awesome structures. So I hope you guys uh, build some. If you happen to build any, send us some pictures. We'd love to show it because that's pretty cool. I know a lot of you have been asking about it. So we did get Champ. I'm sorry, girl. We did get Champ and his girls. They're back in their pen. They enjoyed their day. Um, so tomorrow will be... Vader. Vader, yeah. So I always forget if Vader or Legend, which one they're in. So it's gonna be Vader and his girls. So that should be cute. Lots of little babies. It's okay, girl. Roxy still has crush issues within the pen. She does a lot better, but yeah, she's definitely, she likes you on the other side of the gate and then she'll let you pet her. But in here, she's, she's a little sus of us. All right, the sun is going down right behind this beautiful A-frame that I worked so hard today building. Uh, it's 
pretty good A-frame. So these girls aren't gonna play before the sun goes down, but well, of course, hopefully they'll play around on it eventually or tomorrow or something. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>